side of the geometrical constructions. And one of the points he's making is you can build anything, or even a house, and the nice part about it is you can move the house. If you need, to, if the desert comes to your home, you can take the house to the, to the forest. I like my neighborhood. <laughs> well, maybe that hurricane comes and moves to your neighborhood wherever you want it to. I told you before. Yes. Can you have a marker? You can have the papers, but please bring, keep the markers here. One more marker right here. And one more. Can we get one? Here, I need one paper. I got one more paper. Everybody got one. Okay. Sir, I'll raise you a yellow paper. Okay, well we have a funny little pattern here. We can start if we want by uh, coloring in all of the folds. Color in all the folds, all the little line, perforated edges, lines. Scores. Scores, thank you. So the center diamond, he's doing a big X, like what he's showing you right there. Is that an X or a cross? That's a cross. There's a shape yeah, like yeah, that, and he's really making a cross it. through it. Okay, so now we're going to say that each one of these uh, these uh, bottom uh, sections is equal to the length of one. There's oh, four yeah. ones right one. there. One, put a one to these four sections. How about, how about, the, how about these two sections? Okay, all we're doing is the horizontal now. Now what we're going to do is start to work on our top edge. You see this arc here? That's, we put that in there to indicate that we're taking this first one, and we're going to swing it upward on a, on a radius, such that this vertical is a yeah. one. So we have a one and a one there. <laughs> and then when we get it up there, we're going to connect this point to this point, and we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem here to decide the length of this line, this connecting line. Now, we all know exactly what it is, or not everybody, but I'm sure that, that uh, Pythagorean, <coughs> the theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Yeah. One squared is one, so one plus one equals two, and the square root of two is the answer. Square of two. Did I go too fast with that? Square root of two. Uh -huh. One plus one yeah. is two. Uh -huh. And so that's C squared. So C equals the square root of two. Great. So that's the length of our line over here. Yeah. Is the square root of two. Uh -huh. Okay, we're gonna reflect that line now. We're gonna draw it over here. This is the same line. Let me see. Now we have to, we're going to draw another arc in here as if we cut it. See this arc? I drew that arc in there. As if this is the center point, and we're going to take this line here. This is the square root of 2 now, and we're going to rotate that. We're going to rotate that upwardly until it's vertical. And so now this line here is the square root of 2. And now the vertical uh, line inside of our diamond and then we're going to connect this point to these these two points. We're going to make fill the diamond in, and we're going to calculate the length of that edge. So we're using the theorem again: one squared equals one. The square root of two squared equals two. Uh -huh. One plus two equals three. So the answer for C in this case is the square root of three. So this line here is a length equal to the square root of 3, and so is this one over here. Square root of 3 on both of those two long diagonals. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this square root of 3 and we're going to rotate it up to vertical over here. Uh -huh. So that this vertical is the square root of 3. Yeah. We have one more uh, line we can draw in here, and that's from, 
it's from this this point up here to this center point down here where that is also equal to this line. We have one more uh, set of uh, our math to do. Let's figure out the length of this last diagonal. One squared is one. The square root of three squared is three. We add the one to the three and get four. Our length of our edge is the square root of four. So that's a two. Two. Okay, so let's look at what we've done here. We've, we've got a lot of, we, we took this, started with a one. We rotated it and we got the square root of 2 and then we rotated that and we got the square root of 3 and then we rotated that and we got the 2. And what we've ended up with are two of what I call uh, our known root Pythagorean triangles and that's a square, a diagonal through a square, 1, 1 and the square root of 2, that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And over here we have a, a half of an equilateral triangle. Yeah. And it's a 1 and a 2 and the square root of 3 and that's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And in the middle, we've got something new. What is this thing in the middle? What does it do for us? Look, here it is. Here's a square, here's an equilateral triangle, and here's something different. We don't know what that is. Somebody might know. I don't know. But look at what it does for us. Look at what this thing is. It's exactly this shape that we've been playing with here. This is the, this is the, let's see. Here it is here. This is the, the diamond of the rhombic dodecahedron. And let's see if we can find it. Let's see. Let's see if we can find it in real life. Where does it live in the 3D world? Does it have a home? And uh, you know, I think we can find it. What we'll do is we'll, we'll start with a cube. We'll just do this one with our hands. Let's start with a cube, a one unit cube, for instance. One, 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 one. Yeah, well, you know, lo and behold, the diagonal across the top of a one unit cube is the square root of two. So we've got a square root of two here, and we've got a vertical edge here that equals a one. So look, if we take a diagonal right through that cube, we've got our triangle, a one and a square root of two, and then this diagonal is <coughs> the square root of three. So we found out where we can find our triangle inside of the 3D world. It's the diagonal of the cube. So look at that. We've got here we've got a, a, a diagonal through a square, and here we've got half of an equal a lateral triangle, and here we've got a diagonal through a cube. So it's a it's got a place. It's got a place. Does it do anything for us? How does it build? How does it actually build for us in the three D world? What we can do next is uh, is we can go to uh, let's make a bigger cube instead of one single one unit cube. Let's go to a two unit cube. So that's eight of our one unit cubes in a big block here. And then instead of just one diagonal, well, let's do four diagonals. Let's go back, back that way, and then let's go this way, and then let's go the other way. And we've created these little die pyramids, or little pyramids inside of this four unit, eight unit cube coming right to the center of the cube. Six little pyramids coming to the center of the cube. And the faces of those pyramids are equal to our lost triangle, right? Because it's a we have to split that in half in order to do our Pythagorean theorem. It was a two unit cube, so this is a one. And remember, it's a cube again, so this is a one here. It's a one to the center of the floor of the cube, and it's a one up to the center of the cube. So this line is a square root of two, so this is a square root of three. So that's our triangle there, and inside of this two unit cube, it's in the face of the little pyramid. Okay, so, uh, well, we've got a little bunch of little pyramids, but what does that give us? Maybe what we can do is we can turn this into a 3D checkerboard. Let's take this one here, and I'll cut up and, and then leave it there, and let's skip a cube. And then let's go to this one, and we'll cut this one up over here, and we'll, we'll go that way and this way. And so we've got this uh, cut up uh, cube in every other cube of a 3D checkerboard. And now let's go to one we've, we've left out. This is an empty cube here. On this empty cube, these little pyramids are coming out, out from the faces. And those faces line up and form the diamond. They form the diamond of the rhombic uh, dodecahedron. So here's a little pyramid coming out, and here's a pyramid coming out, and the faces line up and form this diamond, and that diamond is this, is this angle. And 
one thing that we, one thing I used to talk about, you know, important of this thing is how it relates to uh, other polyhedra, like uh, other cubic polyhedra, like uh, or even the platonic solids. If you can believe it, this angle of this diamond is equal to the base angle uh, intersection, which is called the dihedral angle of the tetrahedron. This angle right here is the dihedral angle of the tetrahedron. If you look at this angle right here, this angle right here, that's the face angle or dihedral angle of an octahedron. You can believe that. And then this is where my little square edge comes in. If you look at this angle here, that would be the angle of a cube octahedron. I mean, it goes on and on. This, this, these angles here relate to the angles of the Archimedean cubic polyhedron. This defines the dihedral angles of all that makes them uh, family forms that uh, you know that uh, we're able to work with. What what the rhombic uh, decahedron does for me is it's the basic geometry to all of the structures that we've been doing out here in the last uh, five years. And this picture over here shows some of the uh, structures that we've built. Yeah. 